Over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video is out. In this video, we talk about a bizarre controversy involving Baylor in the 1990s and how they needed to lose in order to make a bowl game, as a win would keep them out of the bowl picture. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. Let's be honest. Is this the most shocking Super Bowl hangover of all time? I'm not sure anyone saw this much of a drop-off coming. Sure, the Los Angeles Rams lost some key pieces in the offseason. Von Miller went to Buffalo. Odell Beckham Jr. got injured during the Super Bowl and is still a free agent. Andrew Whitworth retired. But the core was still there. These were still the Rams that we were talking about. This was a team that had never finished with a losing record under head coach Sean McVay since he arrived in 2017, had made the playoffs every season but one since then, and had been one of the most formidable opponents in all of football for the last half decade, with their talent and their years of success and their bold strategy of trading away all of their high draft picks for proven veterans, finally paying off with a win at Super Bowl 56 against the Cincinnati Bengals, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But this? Don't get me wrong. I didn't have the Rams repeating as Super Bowl champions or NFC champions or anything like that. Heck, I said after week one, when they got embarrassed by the Buffalo Bills, that based on history and based on the admittedly small sample size before the Rams of three defending champions to lose their opening game that badly, it might not be an over-exaggeration to say that the Rams are in trouble. Take a listen to what I said. This sample set doesn't exactly inspire a ton of confidence if you are a Rams fan right now. None of them won a playoff game, and depending on your definition, none of them even made it to a playoff game, since the 1952 Rams played a play-in game against the Lions. All three of these teams, just like the 2022 Rams, lost by three touchdowns or more in their opening game of the season. And all three of these teams had seasons that their fan bases would definitely describe as unsuccessful. If you want to watch the full video, click the card in the upper right corner. But my god, I didn't think it'd be this bad. I didn't think we'd be talking about a team that is not only sitting at 3-5 and five as we near the halfway point of the season, but looks completely inept. Offensively, the Rams are terrible. They're averaging just 16.4 points per game, which is 29th in the league, and is a far cry from last season, when they were averaging nearly 11 points per game more than that. The defense, which was a strength, is now a weakness, thanks to some baffling decisions by Raheem Morris as the defensive coordinator. Matthew Stafford does not look like what he once was, as through eight games, he's thrown eight touchdowns and eight interceptions, with a really bad ratio of one to one. Of the quarterbacks to start at least eight games so far this year, of which there are 20, Stafford is the only one without a positive touchdown to interception ratio. The running game is awful, averaging just 3.2 yards per carry, as the team ranks second to last in rushing yards and yards per carry. And not one all season have they played a complete game of football. They've shown flashes against admittedly weaker competition, like in the first half against the Atlanta Falcons and the second half against the Carolina Panthers, but this Rams team isn't just a team that's dropped off and is now only good instead of great. This is a team that looks legitimately bad. This is a team that looks extremely vulnerable and looks cooked. And this is a team that after losing 16-13 to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Week 9, thanks to some Tom Brady magic, looks like they're in serious trouble, and are in real danger of missing the playoffs entirely. So I decided to do some digging. Just how screwed are the Rams? After their last loss, they are guaranteed, no matter what they do against the Arizona Cardinals in their next game on November 13th, to be below 500 at the midway point of the season. In a 17-game season, that would be game number 9. And even if they win that game, they're still sitting at 4-5. and five. So I wanted to look at other defending champions to have this happen to them. I wanted to look at other defending champions that at the midway point of their season trying to defend their title, just couldn't seem to recapture that magic or find their form, and were below 500. And from there, I wanted to see two things. Number one, did they turn it around and eventually find their rhythm? And number two, did they turn it around enough? to the point where they were playing some good old-fashioned playoff football and got that chance to defend their title? Well, the answer might surprise you to some extent. Because yes, 
the 2022 Los Angeles Rams are historically bad. But history may be on their side, or may not be on their side, depending on how you want to look at it, and depending on how you want to evaluate things. You'll see what I mean as I break everything down. Here are the only two criteria that I looked at, aside from having to be below 500 at the halfway point of the season. Number one, I'm only looking at seasons from 1936 on. Now, while this might seem on paper like an arbitrary cutoff date, it's not. Because 1936 was the very first season that every single team in the NFL played the same number of games, meaning that we had an actual established halfway point. Prior to 1936, the schedules were not even the slightest bit standardized. You had some teams playing six games and some teams playing 16. And number two, I'm excluding the strike shortened seasons of 1982 and 1987 from this list, even though both the 1982 San Francisco 49ers and the 1987 New York Giants qualify. The reason for that is that these strike shortened seasons go against the spirit of this post, and they have a giant asterisk next to them. The Giants were below 500 at the halfway point thanks to having to play with awful replacement players who were probably watching the previous Super Bowl on their couch not even thinking about playing again. And the 49ers had their season interrupted by over two and a half months. In other words, I'm only looking at uninterrupted seasons for the purposes of this. So with that in mind, prior to the Rams this year, there were seven teams to win the championship that have a losing record at the halfway point of the season. We're going to go in reverse chronological order and start off with this team right here, the 2013 Ravens. After they won Super Bowl 47 the previous season, they infamously had one of the worst off-seasons ever, where they lost so many guys that many genuinely wonder if they could even be at 500, as they lost a whopping 8 starters, including Ray Lewis, wide receiver Anquan Bolden, center Matt Burke, and a whole bunch of other guys. And with all these changes, the Ravens got off to a poor start, sitting at 3-5 through their first 8 games, including a bad stretch in there where they didn't win for over a month. The bad news was that the Ravens were unable to make the playoffs, as for the first time ever under head coach John Harbaugh, they were watching playoff football at home. However, the good news was that they did turn things around over the second half of the season, going 5-3. You're going to notice this theme throughout all of these teams, so just keep that in mind. Up next, we have the 2006 Steelers, who were coming off of their victory over the Seattle Seahawks at Super Bowl 40, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And through their first games, things were looking like a complete disaster. They were sitting at 2-6, and six, including a two-month stretch where they won just one game. They had some issues at quarterback with Ben Roethlisberger not being fully healthy, and their defense, which was third in the NFL in 2005, was struggling pretty badly thus far, allowing 176 points, or 22 points per game which was the fourth worst total in the AFC. Now, the Steelers dug too deep of a hole for themselves to make it to the playoffs, as they were unable to make it despite their best efforts in the second half of the year. However, over the second half of the year, they did manage to turn things around, going 6-2, and two, and with the defense having one three-game stretch in December, where they allowed just 13 points and one touchdown. Even though it was disappointing to miss the playoffs, you can't really complain about a 6-2 second half of the season where you look like one of the best teams in the league. Next on this list is the 1999 Broncos, a team that might hold the distinction for being one of the least surprising bad defending champions ever. After winning back-to-back -back Super Bowls, including Super Bowl 33 the year before, they were going into the 1999 season without John Elway under center, as he announced his retirement. Predictably, the result was an offense that struggled to get anything going over the first half of the season, and a team that just wasn't very good. Through their first eight games, the Broncos were 2-6, and six, with a surprisingly bad defense that had allowed the third most points of any team in the AFC, with a quarterback in Brian Greasy who was going through some growing pains, and with a team that started the season off with an 0-4 record, making it one of the worst starts for a defending champion ever. While the bad news was that the Broncos could not make it to the playoffs, the good news was that they did finish the season with a 6-10 record, meaning that over the second half of the season, they managed to turn things around somewhat, going 500 in that stretch. Since we're excluding the two strike-shortened seasons, 
the next team on the list, and the last one in the Super Bowl era, is the 1981 Raiders. After the Raiders won Super Bowl XV the year before, the 1981 season was full of turmoil, from the inevitable relocation of the team from Oakland to Los Angeles being a major distraction, to the fact that they had one of the worst offenses of all time. Not only did the Raiders start off 3-5 through their first state games, but they had a three-game stretch in there that was so bad against the Detroit Lions, Denver Broncos, and Kansas City Chiefs that they got shut out in three consecutive games. You can learn more about just how bad that offense was by clicking the card in the upper right corner. The Raiders, over the first half of the season, scored just 98 points, which was dead last in football, and came out to just over 12 points per game. However, even though the Raiders did not make the playoffs, they went 7-9, meaning that over the second half of the season, they went 4-4, four and four, and they actually improved their offensive output to just under 22 points per game in that stretch. Now we go back to the pre-merger era, and hop back in time to 1964, when the Chicago Bears were coming off of an 11-1-2 season from the year before, when they won the 1963 NFL Championship. However, with George Hallis in charge, the Bears looked nothing like the team that won the title the year before. In 1964, each team played 14 games, so the midway point was at the 7th game. And through 7 games, the Bears were just 2-5, and five, and had the second worst point differential in football at minus 63, and the worst defense in football as well, having allowed 188 points, or just under 27 points per game. The bad news for the Bears was that they could not make the playoffs or the NFL championship as they finished the year with a 5-9 record. However, they did have a stronger second half of the season than they did the first half, as whereas they went 2-5 in the first half, they went 3-4 in the second half, and at least looked better in that regard. Before that, we have the 1958 Detroit Lions. In 1957, it didn't seem like things would go great for the Lions after head coach Buddy Parker resigned literally a few weeks before the season started. However, they overcame the odds and won the NFL championship over the Cleveland Browns, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But in 1958, they struggled pretty heavily at first trying to defend their crown, as through six games in their 12-game season, they were just 1-4-1, thanks to the second-worst defense in football and a defense that allowed 171 points through six games, or over 28.5 points per game. And while the Lions couldn't make it to the NFL Championship or the playoffs that season, as they were too far behind, they did have a significantly better second half to the year, where they went 3-3 three three over the final six games, and only allowed 17.5 points in that stretch per game, reducing their average by 11 points. And finally, we have the 1956 Cleveland Browns, as they were the first team under the balanced schedule format to ever be below 500 at the midway point following a championship season. Through six games, the Browns, after winning the NFL championship the year before, were surprisingly terrible and were 2-4. and four. This was a team that had played 10 seasons of professional football across the NFL in the 1950s and the AAFC in the 1940s, and they made it to the championship all 10 times. And yet, here they found themselves in extremely unfamiliar territory thanks to the second worst offense in football having scored just 79 points through six games for an average of slightly over 13 points per game. The bad news for the Browns is that they could not rebound all the way, as for the first time ever, they finished with a losing record, ending the year at 5-7. However, the good news was that their second half of the season was much better, as they went 3-3 in that stretch. So those are the seven teams that the Rams find themselves in company with. Those are the seven teams that in an uninterrupted season, were below 500 at the midway point following a championship. You have the 1956 Browns, the 1958 Lions, the 1964 Bears, the 1981 Raiders, the 1999 Broncos, the 2006 Steelers, and the 2013 Ravens. Now, depending on how you want to look at this, this could be very good or very bad news. The bad news is that not a single one of these teams wound up making the playoffs that year. So in that regard, history is not on the Rams' side one bit. They all dug themselves too deep of a hole. The good news, however, is that all these teams improved over the second half of the season, and shook off the Super Bowl hangover at least a little bit. Over the first half of the season, 
these teams combined for a record of 15-35-1, coming out to a winning percentage of just 30%. Over the second half of the season, however, these teams combined for a record of 28-23, with a winning percentage of 55%. In other words, these teams were usually twice as better in the second half of the season as they were in the first half of the season. And that means that even though the Rams might be one of the worst teams in football right now, history says they won't stay that way, and that they'll figure something out over the second half of the season. Now, there are some key differences that differentiate the Rams' situation from others. On the positive side, if you're a Rams fan, the NFC is super weak right now, and I don't know who is going to be getting that number 7 seed, because no one seems to want it right now. So if you improve by that much like the other teams have, you've still got a shot at the playoffs. On the negative side, there were very obvious reasons for other teams as to why they struggled in the first half. Relocation controversies for the Raiders, Otto Graham's retirement for the Browns, Ben Roethlisberger being unhealthy for the Steelers, the Ravens losing everyone in the offseason, John Elway's retirement for the Broncos. You get the idea. There isn't really one of those for the Rams. There isn't really one particular obvious thing that hangs over the Rams' head like a dark cloud. So there remains some rightful skepticism about them being able to actually right this ship. So make of this stat what you will. Because even though history says that the Rams might be okay in the second half of the season, history says that at least through the first half, they've been historically bad. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.